this place A new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space Our fears and our dreamings Brought here to you in the light of this day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken We shall arise at the sound of our name Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone and I hope you feel gathered in at least virtually as we gather together as the, the people of God, as church, scattered around the world as we may be, but praying as one. As we begin, let's examine our hearts and ask the Lord for his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. And Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth. Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Christ with the Holy Spirit 
bread in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen, amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the seventy elders. And as the Spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also. And they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the prophets of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, Enduring forever The ordinances of the Lord are true All of them just The precepts of the Lord Give joy to the heart Though your servant is careful of them Very diligent in keeping them Yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From wanton sin especially, restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have been moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud. 
and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life, maimed, than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of my siblings for many years now has had a couple of chihuahuas. They are both adorable. One has big ears, dark fur, and, and long hair, and the other one is um, the tiniest little thing, doesn't eat like it should, kind of runs around without using one of its legs for some reason. It's so tiny and light, I don't think it needs all four legs, and just kind of goes around like crazy. And the, their fiancé, who they're, um, they're living with, also has two dogs, but they're like lab mixes, so it's really funny to see the two of them together with their sets of dogs. But if I had to ask you, you already know which set is the most Fierce, right? It's the chihuahuas. And, uh, you know, they won't take any gruff from any other dog, and you could be out on the street, and they're, they're just ready to take on the world. Uh, maybe they're, they're watching out for themselves, but they sometimes seem to be trying to defend the bigger dog from anyone who wants to look at them funny or, or step on the wrong sidewalk. I think of that small dog, big dog energy a lot when we talk about uh, our relationship with God and how sometimes we feel that we need to step in and defend God. You don't have to defend God, all right? God can take care of, uh, of themselves. 
And, and so, uh, first of all, in this, this reading from Numbers, I think the first way you could take a look at this is to say that, that, that people are, are trying to defend God, right? Um, oh, no, no, we got to protect God's reputation. We got to keep this grace safe. We can't let other people have this blessing, you know? Um, no, God. God knows what God is doing. You can, you can let God do God things, right? Uh, our struggle sometimes is just keeping up. <laughs> um, you know, so there's a, a temptation here to, to gatekeep a little bit, we would say, to keep others away from these blessings. But there's another reason we do that. It's not just about protecting our friends. Sometimes it is about that jealousy, about trying to keep something exclusive and therefore special or precious. This is mine and it's important because nobody else has it. Uh, there's all kinds of stories about how uh, diamonds got to be the way they are in jewelry and in some sense it was an advertising campaign but it was also about keeping that scarcity, making sure that people couldn't get them easily. And so I wonder if that's not going on here too. Whose spirit is this in the first reading? We hear at the beginning that the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses and bestowing it on the 70 elders. So you might be tempted to think that it's Moses' spirit. It's exclusive to him, and anybody that wants to get in touch with that spirit needs to go through Moses. But by the time we get to the end of the passage, it's quite clear that it's not Moses' spirit, it is God's spirit. And though it rested for a moment on Moses, it's meant to be for many, many other people. It's a very open thing. Um, limited for the moment to 72, but um, this shouldn't be like a panic, oh my goodness, it's reached 72 people, we've got to contain this. Um, you know, it, it's a first step to a blessing to everyone. Um, going back to promises to Abraham, a, a blessing to all nations, that God's spirit would, would rest on everyone. So um, the first thing I think to think about in this reading is how we sometimes attempt to um, protect God or maybe kind of put a limit on where we think God's grace can reach. Um, it's more commonly our job to, to uh, be watchful for where God's grace is already going ahead of us. So um, a similar kind of pattern in the gospel as well. We have uh, John says to Jesus, teacher, someone's trying to drive out demons in your name. How dare they, right? Um, you know, again, trying to keep that kind of control over the grace or the brand or whatever it is. You know, we're the ones over here, you know, using this spirit. And Jesus uh, brings it back a bit to the mission. If the mission is driving out demons, then you should just be happy to see demons being driven out. If the mission is to get Jesus' name out there, then the more people that are interested, the better. He's worried about the big picture here and, and, and people moving in the right direction rather than all of these little details about control. So he points out, whoever forms a mighty deed in my name, he can't be against us. You know, you can't be saying Jesus is awesome, I'm going to cast out a demon using his name, and then in the next breath, you know, Jesus is a fake and a phony. Um, well, what did we just see? So um, there's this uh, witness in the actions of other people that they're doing the right thing, even if what they're, they're, uh, they're saying maybe, even if they're not like, oh, they're not an officially fo follower of Jesus, it's obvious that their actions, their love of others, setting other people free, they're obviously... Uh, working in God's spirit and very close. So it might be tempting to say that, you know, ah, none of this really matters. You know, bring everyone in. And yet we have this rather harsh second part of this passage. And I think it takes us back again to the mission. For those that are willing to do the mission, for those that are willing to do God's work, for those that are filled with love and charity and a care for their neighbor, this is the place to be. But you can't be here if you're not on board with that mission, if your heart is, is one of hate in particular. There are, uh, uh, there's a tendency I've noticed for, for Jesus sometimes to talk on two tiers. Uh, uh, there's that open tier. Everybody's welcome to come. Everybody's welcome to be at Mass. Everybody's welcome to be present here and to know God's grace. But boy, does he expect a lot of the leadership, right? 
Uh, he expects a lot of his disciples. Uh, one of the masses that we were doing here with Father Jim, I was joking with him. I said, just once, I want to find him saying something nice about priests. That would be great for me as a, as a priest. Um, but, but he holds them to very high standards. Uh, there's a lot of good that we can do, but a lot of harm as well. Uh, one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, he says that it's, it's not of bad mice that devils are made, but bad angels. Um, the more potential for good that you have, the more potential for harm as well. And so um, he, he kind of manages the transition from where we started here to the, the later bit about whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, oh boy, are they going to be in trouble. So Jesus is, is forgiving and merciful for our mistakes, but um, as I said earlier, that God can take care of himself, God can protect, and God protects the little ones. God is always watching over those who need help. And so when we get into these passages about sin, it can be tempting sometimes to think about personal sin, sometimes the sin that I've done that I feel guilty for. Um, but I think it's a little better to, to see this as the kinds of things that we do that harm others. And we who are supposed to witness to Jesus, who are supposed to invite others to follow him and invite others into a, a, a place of love and freedom, uh, when we harm others, uh, we make it very hard for them to come to God. And I, since all the scandals we've had in Buffalo, that always comes to my mind when I, I read this passage. How many people have struggled to come to church, struggled to read the Bible, struggled even to believe in God when they've seen the harm that people have done in his name? So it falls to us, I think, to continue to be a part of that mission. A mission to people that need healing, that has to be a mission of openness, uh, a willingness to do the work of God, to listen attentively to those who are in need. But if we're gatekeeping, it can't be driving people away from the pews or for coming to Mass because of whatever they may feel guilty for in their own hearts. But at the same time, with Jesus, we've got to be so careful with our leaders and who we put in positions of trust. So we'll turn now to our creed and what we all share in common. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now, mindful of this world's many needs, we turn to our Heavenly Father in prayer. We pray for those who exercise leadership in the church, that they will serve and pray for all those in need. For this we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the numerous agencies and organizations in the church that confront poverty on a daily basis, that God will strengthen them with faith, hope, and love. For this we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all victims of abuse, especially those who have lost their innocence to people they once trusted and respected. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray on this world day of migrants and refugees, all who have left their homelands in the hope of new life, that they will gain the peace and security they long for. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for continued healing for all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died this week 
and for all the dearly departed who rest in the presence of the Lord. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our personal needs and for the intentions written in the parish book of prayers, which we now offer in silence. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Now, Heavenly Father, you know our needs. Hear now our prayers, which we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. siblings, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all of God's holy church. And grant us a merciful God that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he's opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Now, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Spread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Now, Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you 
Take away the sins of the world Have mercy on us Lamb of God You take away the sins of the world Grant us Now behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pause and remember that, though not physically present at this Mass, as the baptized, we are always intimately united as the body of Christ.
And let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we're united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 So I've had a chance to do a few Masses with all of you now as Father Dan, the new pastor here. And over the month of October, we're going to be doing some experiments and how this Mass works. I'd like to be able to do more of it in our, our main chapel, though you're likely seeing this on a Sunday. You may not know that we usually record earlier in the week. And so uh, one of the things we'd like to be able to do is invite you in to see our, our regular community on the weekend. So... Um, we'll see how that goes, but just to say that over the next month you'll probably see some changes to the channel, and um, I hope they uh, are changes that work out well for you. I'll certainly be listening and, and talking with folks as we go. But the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. your faithfulness, O God of Jacob. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember God of Jacob, you use the weak to lead the strong, you lead us in the song of your salvation, and all your people sing along, so remember your people, remember your children, remember your to him.